Okay, so very quickly, how does a super antigen differ from a non super antigen or a normal antigen? So let's look at it. Super antigen. So every T cell, helper T cell we are talking about, every helper T cell has a T cell receptor that has a specific binding site for one kind of antigen. So one T cell can only, its receptor, T cell receptor, can only bind with one kind of antigen. So if I make multiple T cell cells here, so let's say this is another and the receptor here look at the shapes of the receptors. These are different. So there is one more T cell here and let's say the receptor on this one looks like this. point is all of these receptor the binding sites are different um, let me line up the binding sites with red color so these are the binding sites of the T cell receptor they are the same way like an antibody has the binding site so now imagine if there is a let's say there is a macrophage here which is an antigen presenting cell. And let's say if it has on the MHC2, it is holding, let's say this is its MHC2. If it is holding an antigen that is shaped like this, this is the antigen. What do you think which T cell will bind with this MHC2? So I hope you realize that the shape of this antigen is actually matching with this antigen binding site on let's say this was T cell A. Now T cell B and T cell C will not bind because the shapes are different and hence we can say that as a result of this specific structure, the antigen presenting cell and the T cell A will bind and they will activate each other. Remember when the, when the cells bind, what will happen is, so if I make the T cell receptor here and I bring the APC over here and have them bind using this specific antigen you know well let's make a cd4 over here as well so that is cd4 there are cd3 as well important thing to note is that this binding has occurred now this binding in this specific antigen shape will not occur with the other T cells. So this antigen and the antigen presenting cell will only be able to activate one T cell or a very tiny number of T cells. The result of this would be that T cell would release interferon gamma. Remember interferon gamma, axis interferon gamma, and then the APC in turn will release interleukin 1, interleukin 6, tumor necrosis factor, and many other things. So this is the activated system, and now immune system has started working. So this is a non-super antigen's behavior. What you should remember in this discussion is that one non-super antigen will only trigger one T cell or a very few number of T cells. So now your question will be, well, 
how can just one T cell help with the antigen? So what happens is, remember, once these cells activate each other, T cell will be proliferated. What does that mean? That means the T cell that got bound, that's there will be copies of this T cell made called clonal expansion. So clones or copies are made and the T cells are expanded. And these are the T cells that would now go out in the body, find the antigen presenting cells with this antigen and work with them. So this is the normal behavior. Now let's look at how a super antigen works. If I take the same mechanism and I say, all right, so here is the one T cell. There is the other T cell. And here is the third T cell. And we have APC. So let me make APCs near all of them. So APC, 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 which means when antigen presenting cell, in our case, we can call them macrophages. And let's say the macrophages have the MSC2 molecules on them, right? Now notice they are not bound because there is no antigen that is shaped and the, there is no antigen that is presented to bind with a specific T cell. So these are T cells, T cell, T cell. However, if there is a super antigen present, what it does is super antigen connects on the outer side of a T cell and MSC2 of an APC. It does not care for how the binding site looks. This means a super antigen can now connect with almost all the T cells, helper cells and APCs and activate them. Right, so now this is activated this is activated, this is activated, I hope you get the point, which in turn will cause the macrophages to be activated through interferon gamma, and that would cause macrophages to release the cytokines, right? So cytokines, so IL-1, IL-6, tumor necrosis factors, then many cytokines are coming from T cells as well. The important thing to note here compared to the last discussion is that a super antigen is able to activate a large number of T cells regardless of their binding specificity. These super antigens can actually activate up to 25% of the helper T cells. That's a very large number of cells to become active. And so, of course, when the cytokines will be released and macrophages will be active, this will be called a massive activation. And that massive activation is what causes toxic shock syndromes. So this is the, the basic idea here is that how can a super antigen activate a massive number of T cells and macrophages compared to a non-super antigen? So this is that mechanism. Thank you very much.